so uh, I guess everyone or almost everyone here are pretty familiar to go models and I hope uh, you use them in your project and nothing, nothing other from that, no, no client, no DAP or any kind of that stuff. Uh, and we know that go models are pretty awesome. Uh, and one of the best introductions um, in Go, one of the best things in Go for the last couple of years. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to slightly cover some knowledge that sometimes we may miss due to uh, lack of time while working with something, uh, in particular with models. You know, it may be when um, we just use it, it just works, we don't know how, but uh, let it be. We, we, we will not dig deeper, but I personally think that we all always should have um, some great um, sharp axe that we um, that we cut the trace. Um, the presentation as well is much less than the entire code models knowledge. Um, and um, I hope, uh, this is only the first part of my speech here, and I'm, I'm expecting for your feedback uh, just to uh, understand which topics, what what parts of call models infrastructure should be covered in future. But now we will start with some uh, simple stuff. I know that it's, it's a bit late because it's more than one and a half years. Call models are just official and. Uh, they are preferred as uh, as the version system. So, um, but I'd say that um, it's a good starting point for covering uh, some darkest and uh, deepest uh, corners of that knowledge base. Um, okay, so this part of uh, the. This presentation will cover uh, the module concept itself um, and without any infrastructure that models is supported by no proxies, no some, but no, not, not that stuff. Um, I'll cover only Go 1.16 version of models uh, just to make it shorter, but be aware that models are rapidly evolving from version to version. Uh, so some features that I highlight may be not present in the version of Go that you use, especially I will talk about retract, uh, the version that, uh, that the feature that um, appeared only in Go 1.16 version. So just don't, don't beat me with, with stones. Um, so uh, one more thing that I want to tell you about is that Go 1.16 requires code models as the only possible dependency uh, management tool. So we have not so much time until Go 1.17 uh, will appear and we will have only valid, um, only two valid versions of Go, only two maintained versions of Go that um, will require uh, Go models as the only dependency management tool. So if you still have, um, if you still have something except of Go models in your project, uh, you'd better to make it before Go uh, 1.17 is released. Uh, let's just take uh, some plan introduction. Uh, so today we will cover some basic model concepts, uh, their structure and stuff related to work with a single model. Uh, or a set of management, managed models. Um, we will also see files that support module functionality, their structure. Uh, we'll see some version specifics, and then I'll try to show different small aspects of usage of models in practice. Um, so let's just remember mm, what models are and their basic concepts. Uh, a module is an aggregation of packages. Uh, it's the most matching entity to release and go infrastructure. Uh, if we want to make a release of some component, we'd rather create a module with all the code uh, 
then create a Git repository or a Git archive and um, you know distribute it on some websites. We rather to have that um, to have that. Uh, let's say abstraction over all the uh, delivery stuff. Uh, also modules are distributed now into general ways. Uh, these ways are module proxy servers that support um, different model infrastructure stuff and uh, version control systems. Um, when working with code base uh, on our local machines, we uh, initialize modules using go mod init command. Um, that command creates a single file called that mod that contains of, um, that consists of basic information about our setup. So uh, let's start from uh, from discussing that uh, that file. Um, so go mod file is the main configuration that actually defines the module. Uh, its structure is pretty simple. Um, it contains of several directives that you may see on this slide. Um, that directives uh, help to um, set up to describe the module state. Um, so let's let's discuss the directives. There are only uh, six. I see six. Yeah. Um, the first one and the uh, required one. Oh, I'm not really sure. Do you see my pointer or? Uh, yep. Okay. Cool. So uh, the first one is the uh, module directive. It defines the module's path. Uh, it's required and can be only one per mod file. The position is not really um, that way, but it's mostly on the top of the file. Uh, this pass will be used as a root prefix for all your packages. Uh, for uh, any versions of module that you release um, higher than uh, V1, uh, the path should also end with a major version like here v2 or here v5. That's just a common uh, requirement of modules. Um, the second directive uh, is Go directive. It defines the minor version of Go um, with which the module is developed, uh, like Go 116, Go 113, Go 112, and kind of that. Uh, it also may be only one per file. Um, now let's switch to the uh, most important one, uh, the required directive. Uh, it specifies a list of dependencies that the model re relies on. Uh, the format of this directive looks like importing our Go files. Um, it can be a directive with a single, um, single dependency. And it can be kind of a block of kind of an aggregation of um, different required dependencies. Um, this directive is uh, pretty simple. All you need is to specify the uh, module path and its version. Um, version will, uh, versions we will discuss a bit later. Uh, one more thing I have to. Uh, all about is this indirect comment. Uh, go mod, go module aware comments, so called comments. Uh, we'll add this indirect comment in case of uh, there are no references to the package of the dependency, to, to any packages of the dependency in our main module, in our packages uh, that require this dependency. So indirect um, may appear. And some different ways. Uh, in most of cases, it can be cleaned up with uh, Go mod tidy. Um, what else? Yeah, let's go to the next one. And next one, uh, I guess I'll cover exclude. Uh, exclude directive specifies the list of dependencies um, of the versions that should be prevented from being used. Uh, it works only for the main module, um, the, the, the model that we are actually working with. This, um, 
yeah, I, I, I have to say what's what's the main module. Main module is uh, the module when this goal mod file is present the main module of our project, kind of that. Um, what else about these one? Uh, yeah, so uh, this directive works uh, only for the main module. Uh, if uh, any dependency uses the explicit version, it still was, will use it. So, for example, if uh, any other dependency uses crypto 1.4.5, uh, it still will be able to use that version of library. Uh, but our main module will not use that. Uh, the syntax is the same as for required directive. Uh, only the difference is that indirect will not appear here. Uh, next one, let's cover the replace directive. The syntax is a bit different. Uh, on the left side, uh, we can see um, we, we have to specify a dependency in its version uh, that, uh, that we want to um, replace. And on the right side uh, of this um, arrow, uh, we have to specify uh, another dependency and its version, the dependency that we want to replace with. Um, so replace directive replaces a dependency or a single version of, uh, of a dependency with some another module. Um, if we specify um, a version for the replaced module, uh, only that version will be replaced like, like in this go and next one to uh, net one to three, uh, and only version one to three will be mm, replaced. Uh, if we don't specify this version, like here, uh, the entire uh, module, the entire dependency will be replaced with uh, replaced with um, the uh, with the right part dependency. Uh, as well, we can. Um, use local directories to local modules uh, to replace our dependencies, uh, like in these two cases. Um, in this case, that directory uh, has to be a module. It means it must have a goal module file in its route. So this for that, um, for that directory should have a goal mod file inside, and this one as well. Um, also, the version for local replacement, as you can see here, uh, it uh, must be always omitted. So for right side, when we mm, require some uh, external uh, replacement, we must specify a particular version. For the locals, uh, we just have to omit them. Um, the last directive that is actually added uh, in Go 1.16 is directly retract. Uh, this one specifies version of the main module, the module we maintaining, we are writing, we are creating, um, the version of the main model that should be prevented from usage. In case you have some major issue with a particular version of the module, you may specify in the retract directive um, uh, specify it in, in the retract directive um, and all the dependents of uh, uh, your module will be notified about the version retraction. Of course, only after they um, they will download that version or kind of making many requests done and not making them from, uh, from the caches. Um, that's pretty much about go mod file structure. If you have any questions, please, please ask. Or we will move to the next one. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um, so then let's discuss, uh, let's discuss this kind of help. I guess um, the structure of go sound file looks like a dark secret no, uh, knowledge to everyone who sees it the first time. Uh, go sound file is kind of uh, auto-generated file that reflects the actual 
build uh, of our software, um, actual build of our software when we work with Go mod file. So Go mod file is our requirements. Go sum is uh, uh, a snapshot of uh, what our build build should look like. So it's intended to make your builds reproducible and secure. Uh, reproducible because uh, you always know the versions of all the transitive dependencies you use. Uh, secure because you always um, can count the secure checksum uh, and validate if the version of the code you download contains the same code that is present in other builds. Sorry guys, do you hear any noises from my side? No, no noises. No noises? Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope so. Because I hear. <laughs> um, cool. Mm, so what I'm, what I'm stopping on. Uh, Sorry, I have to switch my headset. Um. <laughs> yeah, making making some pauses. Uh, I'm talking about security, right? <laughs> uh, so when you go some data. Uh, is different from the module data, it's kind of time to think about dependencies, validation, and cleanup. Uh, also, this file is not supposed to be deleted by hands. Uh, so please don't do that. Uh, and the security aspect uh, of the goal sum is, is the actual reason why it's expected to be part of module artifact and should always be committed to our code base. Um, let's also maybe discuss the structure. Um, each line of the file consists um, of three parts. Uh, the dependency model path, uh, the dependency version, sometimes suffixed with go mode, uh, the hash that um, uh, starts the, the, the third part that starts with a hash name, uh, a colon, and a hash value encoded in base64 form. Uh, you could notice that some of dependencies have different number of records, uh, kind of sys uh, has three, uh, others may have uh, two. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, an example of one record, but it also uh, may be present. Um, and you also may notice difference between uh, these, um, these records. Uh, some of them are prefixed with go mod, go did mod. Um, oh, sorry, not prefixed, uh, prefixed suffix uh, with go mod and some versions are not. Uh, what's the difference between them? Uh, those lines uh, which contain uh, go mod suffix in the version, uh, they will contain hash value um, of the go mod file of the dependency. And those files that, uh, uh, those uh, records that don't contain this go mod suffix, uh, they will have the hash of the entire dependency, all its files and contents. Um, what else? As of now, um, there is only a hashing algorithm uh, that has a name H1. H1 is actually uh, SHA256. Uh, if any other version of algorithm will appear, uh, it will be named H2, H3, H4, and so on. Um, also, I have to mention that um, any uh, replacements, like like on the slide, like for that here, they will not appear in GoSum file, obviously. Uh, 
yeah and if you have any questions about uh, about coded sum file please ask Yep. I hear that my neighbors do uh, renovations. I just want to be sure that you don't hear their, um, their drill. I just want to be sure that you're lucky and I'm not. <laughs> I don't yeah, we don't any hear any noise. Oh, perfect. Uh, cool. So, so before we move further, uh, I just have to describe um, some uh, mod I just have to describe module uh, aware comments. Uh, so there is a list of go command line tools uh, that load the information about our, our packages. When you run them, uh, they scan our code base and uh, load, load packages information. Uh, those comments in, in, in scope of Go modules are called module aware. Uh, they may, may trigger downloading dependencies, their update, their updation, eventually some, some other stuff. Uh, and I'm not actually going to stop on details of these comments, but just want to give you some context that these comments uh, the, the current list of these comments is here. And um, this is for, mm, for version 1.16 as well. Um, and I guess the last file that is related to uh, Go modules is Winder modules.txt. So as most of you are aware we can also work with models in old fashioned Winder mode. Uh, we can do that by running Go mod Winder and so called mod model very common that we discussed previously uh, with flag mod Winder. Uh, and when we work with models such way, Go mod common will generate file uh, in the Winder folder. Well, it put all our dependencies to the Winter folder and we'll generate a file called modules.txt. Um, so it, as well, it's uh, the same object generated as GoSum and we should not edit them by hands. Um, and this file is intended to verify if your mod file and Winter folder uh, are in sync. Uh, when mod file is changed, uh, and we run any module where command uh, that command run uh, that execution will fail until you sync this file with your mod file until you sync the winter folder with your go mod configuration kind of that okay let's move next um also, tiny note about um, version control systems that uh, Go modules support. Uh, I don't have any idea what's Fossil, uh, but it's supported. <laughs> uh, and actually, uh, there is also one uh, kind of popular uh, version control system per force, and for, for some reason, it's not supported. Maybe it's, uh, it's for the greater good. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, and that's pretty much about model structure. There is a lot of other stuff uh, that we uh, that I missed here. Uh, and in case if you need something additional, just please ask. I can try to prepare some material. Or if you want to do that, I'll be glad to to hear something from you. Um, so let's move to okay. Oh, uh, just. Uh, just a question if you have any questions about the Go model structure or um, I don't know that files or something related. Okay, silence. silence. It means that everyone 
understand everything or no one understands nothing. Cool. Well, actually, I'm not really sure that it sounds good in English. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk a bit about version structure. Uh, versioning models is based on semantic versioning structure, um, but you know there is a couple of specific modifications which uh, make the version is not so semantic. Um, and let's discuss those rules and modifications. Um, so, as I said, Go, Go version is pretty similar to semantic version. It starts with letter V, uh, specifies three that separated numbers, major, minor, and quatch versions. Uh, the pre-release version is here, uh, and the build metadata. As experience says, the description of this version structure can take, in, well, I guess more than an hour. So I'll only briefly highlight the specific differences of call models version and semantic versioning. Uh, so the two biggest differences are related to two particular features of models. Uh, first one is pseudo versions. Pseudo versions are um, applied when the version requested doesn't have a version tag uh, for the committed points too. Uh, for example, we can um, we can request for a particular branch like here, like go get uh, some paths and version development. Um, we will have a pseudo version, uh, or there is there is no any tag to refer to, or we want to um, to refer to some commit or I don't know version of uh, software and pseudo version will uh, appear. Uh, it consists of uh, the prefix with the latest version tag, the name stamp when the commit is done, and the 12 symbols of the commit hash. Here is the time timestamp without any uh, spaces or kind of that. Uh, I guess that's caused only by, um, uh, that's caused by semantic versioning syntax uh, but I, I i'd say that it will be a bit more handy if <laughs> this timestamp had at least uh dashes between uh the year demands and all that um what else um well i guess that's that's pretty much about pseudo versions so they're they're pretty simple and i guess all of us already already seen that before as well as i said uh we can uh, refer pseudo versions to uh, not not actually pseudo version but we can refer our goal modules to uh, particular branches master development whatever whatever uh in that case uh go comment will take the um version with the branch and substitutes with this pseudo version uh, the another one uh, feature, kind of feature, is uh, an incompatible uh, build metadata. So, as you may know, by semantic versioning, only major versions of releases may be backward compatible. This requirement is inherited by Go modules, and um, they require every model that is tagged with version two and higher to have a major version suffix in the past, like like here, like with three. Um, yeah, and we talked about that before. Um, in case of uh, this requirement is not uh, matched uh, and the repository doesn't have any Go mod file, uh, the incompatible metadata is added. Uh, in case of uh, you have a Go mod file uh, and you miss V3 uh, or any version here, Go models, at least in version 1.16, uh, we'll swear on you that you should, you should create this, um, this suffix. Um, 
this feature was added to make proper version resolving after the module migration of some repositories that already had uh, some uh, versioning on that. Uh, but now if you do versioning properly for your repositories, you should not have any cases, at least for your dependency here. Uh, you should not be an incompatible. Um, let's move forward. Oh yeah. The hardest part, minimum, minimal, sorry, version selection algorithm. So Go uses an algorithm called minimal version selection to select a set of module versions um, to use when, when it builds packages. Um, it operates uh, on a directed graph of modules uh, that are specified in Go mod files. I say files because it's Go mod and Go sub. Um, each vertex, kind of main, m one two, um, v one two. Uh, each vertex in the graph represents a module version. Each edge uh, <clears throat> represents a minimum required version of a dependency from the required directive. Um, minimal version selection starts at the main module and traverses the graph like we can see here. Um, it tracks the highest required version of each module. Uh, I'd say it tracks any version of each module. Uh, and the least um, of the... Um, of the highest required version um, of each model is our build list. Uh, build list is kind of list of dependencies, list of modules that will be used to build our binaries, to build our library, our uh, binary file, I know some linkable objects and kind of that. Uh, so the comparison goes uh, by minor or or even patch versions. Uh, if minor or lower versions are conflicting, for example, like like here, C1 to 3 and C1 to 4, uh, the biggest one will be taken. Uh, if major versions conflicting, both weight versions will be kept and uh, used in the uh, places they're required in. Uh, Actually, you may have, for example, two major versions even in one file, not even in one package. So let's take a look on that example. Um, the module requires module A with version one to two, um, one to two or higher. Uh, and uh, module B requires version, uh, and requires module B version one to two or higher. Uh, both of them require um, different versions of C1, the 3 and 1, the 4, and uh, both versions require D1, the 2. So from all this list, uh, only the version uh, that will be you know, switched um, will only be a, a, single, a single used version uh, in conflict with uh, with another requirement is C1 to 4. So C1 to 3 will be just um, a weird. Kind of that. Um, you also may remember that for some cases, go some file may have only hash of go mod file for of the dependency without uh, having a, an entire hash dependency. In this example, go sum uh, will have three records for C dependency. One record for uh, C1.4 uh, with go mod file, one record for C1.4 with the entire package, and only one record uh, for C1.3 uh, uh, with only go mod hash. That's why we can have odd um, 
number of uh, number of hashes, number of records in GoSum for some dependencies. Um, there are four more slides about this uh, minimal version selection algorithm. So if you have any questions, just interrupt me or between slides or on slides, because that's not the simplest one seems. It's simple, but not when someone <laughs> describes that to you. Questions, questions? Okay. Uh, let's move forward. So uh, how does it behave with uh, ways to replacement? Uh, the content of a module may be replaced with the replacement directive. Uh, these replacements may change or they will definitely change the module graph since replace, uh, replacement model uh, may have different dependencies than replaced versions. Like we can um, see it here. In this example, um, C1.4 has been replaced with R. Uh, R depends on D1.3 instead of D1.2. Uh, so minimum version selection uh, returns a build list containing A12, uh, uh, B12, uh, and uh, R. Uh, C1.4 will be replaced with R, so um, R will be in the list instead of that, and D13 instead of D12, because R requires that. Um, let's move forward. Uh, now we can take a look on exclusion. Uh, they also change model graph, but not so, um, they, they don't have so much impact on, uh, as, as the replacement. Uh, so when, when a version is excluded, uh, it's removed from the module graph right here. So you want to three, um, and requirements on on that on that exclusion um, are redirected to the next higher version like C one four or if um, there is no higher version they will be redirected to the lower version. Uh, this is how it works. Uh, and in this um, in this example we will have C one four. Uh, used by both A1.2 and B1.2 um, and it will not uh, and will not be very um, how to say uh, it's it, it's not necessary if A1.2 uh, requires C1.3 or not it will be dependent on C1.4 kind of that uh, then Let's go to the update. So uh, as you may know, uh, we may update or upgrade our modules, um, for example, using go get common. Uh, just, just to you know, up upgrade it using um, some higher version that we uh, have right now. Uh, in this example, module B may be upgraded from 1.2 to 1.3. Um, C may be upgraded to 1.4. Um, from from 1.3 to 1.4. And D may be upgraded from 1.2 to 1.3. Uh, upgrades may add or remove entire dependencies. In this case, uh, E1 that one and F one that one will uh, will be required by the main module as an indirect. Uh, also, just pay attention that uh, modules, unlike uh, packages, they may have a dependency cycle, uh, but still packages may not have them. So you 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 may have a mm, a package that imports a module that has a package that imports another module and that another module may import packages from, from your module. Um, 
something like that. And the last one, the downgrade. The downgrade also can be done by um, go get comment or by exclusion directive, as I remember. Um, when do grading, um, Go will take the previous available version of the dependency. If no previous version, the dependency will be dropped. For example, if I want to downgrade uh, a version E1.1, uh, it will not be downgraded, it will be deleted at all from our requirements. Uh, so let's suppose that uh, a problem was found uh, with C1.4. So we downgrade it to C1.3. Uh, C1.4 will be removed from the model graph. Uh, B1.2 is also removed because it requires C1.4 or higher. Uh, and the module requirement will be, main module requirement will be changed to B1.1. Yeah, so the downgrade also may mm, change our uh, other main, main model requirements. Let's talk about that. If if that was um, if that was clear, or <laughs> uh, or maybe you have some questions about minimum version selection. Okay, then. Um, okay, the next part of, um, of presentation, plus one, uh, is kind of practical stuff. I will cover slightly uh, module tooling and um, show some, um, some modules uh, stuff working uh, on my local machine. Uh, if we need kind of a workshop for Go modules that will cover more than um, more than that stuff that I I'll show them, I'll I'd be glad to, glad to have to to take part there or to um, to drive it. So just. Just tell if you if you want to um, go deeper with that uh, with that practical stuff in Go modules. So I'll just have to uh, to switch to my ID this code. Yeah, let's create. Mm -hmm. I'm stopping my sharing and I create new share. Uh, what? Now we will cover a couple of simple comments. If you want, you may repair after me, but I'm not really sure if that is possible now. Uh, do you see my screen? I'm not, I'm not sure how, how much yes. it. It, it looks like it's not full. Just a second. Okay, now I should see it better. Um, let's create. Uh, okay, uh, I'll just create some folder somewhere. Um, Start from from that folder. Uh -huh. Close from C. Okay. So 
the first command that we um, that we start from is always go mod init. In case of we um, start from the go path, um, the new module will be uh, created. Uh, so the path of the module will be created against of source folder. For example, I'm hitting go mod in it. I have an empty go mod uh, file, and now I'm I'm just uh, I'm just in uh, a directory with my go path. Here is it, and um, the the module name was taken from the rest of um, Rest of part of GoPass, GoPass and sources. Uh, if we're outside of GoPass, then we have to specify. Um, then we have to specify go mod in it um, the package pass, for example. Present. And it creates a new model with uh, with the name we specified. Um, then, after we created the mod uh, a module, we want to add some dependencies there. Um, sometimes we may do go mod edit, but uh, the most uh, handy common for that is um, go get. Let's, for example, take, um, I don't know, testify, special testify. Uh, with this um, comment, we'll, we can also specify some particular versions. For example, 1.6.1, I hope it exists. and. Now we see that our goal mod file changes to 1.61. So we actually did a downgrade version. Uh, the same way we can make an upgrade version, or for example, as I shown before, we can switch to a master branch. And we should have some pseudo versions here. Come on. Also, I have to mention that all the modules that you download through your um, Go mod uh, tool set. They are cached uh, in the um, in the local storage. So, uh, for example, I can, as I remember, I can um, all okay minus JSON. Come on. Okay, so for example, I can now use goal list to describe um, my modules information. And uh, here we can see, um, for example, where is our goal mod file um, stored? It, it's, no, this one. Oh, yeah, the, 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 fir the first output is, uh, is there a local mode? Mm, so here is uh, a cache pass of our um, mod file and the cache pass of our um, of our module itself, and the stuff we can have for the same for for for, for every uh, module in our in our list. Um, okay. If we are talking, yeah. So um, one more thing that I have to show right now uh, is go, yeah, like also we may, um, when we find that go sum stores all the versions that we ever uh, downloaded for our modules. For example, we download uh, version 1.7 of Testify. Mm, we have it recorded here. 
161, the same 171 from master, the same. Uh, to just brush up all that um, unused dependencies or uh, that kind of legacy stuff, we can uh, do go more tidy. I hope all you know that common and go more tidy will clean up um, the modules from all the unused dependencies. Uh, also, one more cleanup. Um, one more cleanup common is go clean. That actually does some cleanup actions for our go tooling, but um, I can specify also a specific uh, flag mod cache, and it will clean all the cache for um, for our modules that 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 we loaded previously. And then we may redeploy them from, from the remote system. Uh, now let's switch to another window. I have some prepared modules there. Um, what is this one? Showcase. Yeah. Uh, so now let's just take a look on, um, on our code mod file. That are prepared. Uh, as I uh, said previously, uh, we can have both major. Uh, we have we can have several major versions uh, for different modules. For example, here we have version two, and here we have version uh, one. Uh, pay attention that. Uh, if you're importing version two, the pass of the module actually the pass of the module should be exactly the module that you that you import. Um, for this module, go mod incompatible. I created a tag, uh, but in the um, in the actual co mod file of this uh, module, there is no uh, pass uh, suffix with v two. That's why we have incompatible here. Um, what else? Uh, also, you may see that uh, I did some replacement here and this stuff. Um, and what's actually um, required for any kind of replacements is to have, wait, this, this replacement is here. It's global. Um, Sorry, it's local. Uh, what's re required for that replacements is having go mod file inside. Uh, there is also a, um, an interesting discussion about should we use uh, go sub modules? As you can see, we, we, we can't use that. We can have a module under under module go mod file inside the directory that already has go mod file. Uh, in my opinion, uh, there is one uh, issue with them. When I tag this repository with some version, all my modules will have the same version. And uh, when, for example, I'm building some, um, I'm changing uh, my pub public API for the uh, child one, I have to update the, uh, the major version, but I don't have update the major version for my parent uh, module. So in this case, I'd say that uh, go sub models are not the best way if you are doing proper um, proper version of your uh, APIs. Um, so from the comments perspective, what I also wanted to share is, um, let's take a look on go mod graph. Here we can see a uh, graph, kind of graph, um, of dependencies, uh, what requires what. In our case, uh, our main module, our root module requires everything, uh, almost everything that we have in the list of Go modules, and also GoPKG, uh, YAML requires some 
OPTG check we want. Uh, the same uh, way we can use uh, a common go mod y. And this comment will describe us why do we need something kind of that. Uh, let's also uh, let's also check. Uh, so I told that go sum gives us security. Let's also check what uh, will happen if I try to forge this. Um, this hash. Go mod to block. Okay. Uh, go clean. Clean. Hmm. Oh, I'm in run directory. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's let's break this one. Security error, and uh, we have difference between downloaded hash and go some hash. So never leave your um, go some uh, empty or. Uh, never leave it outside of your repository, your distribution, and uh, go, go some as to, is the guarantee of your security distribution. Uh, okay, what else? What else? Um, I guess for now, that's all. Uh, for now, that's all, and uh, thank you for listening. Um, I'd say if you have any questions, please ask them now, if you're still there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sardion, for presentation. I, I have a small question yeah, regarding replacements. You mentioned replacements functionality. I haven't seen it before. So how this works from like uh, code perspective? How do you import those? And what's, oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, what's that? I just read in that and forgot about that. So um, let's see. There is uh, imported the Langark X net, uh, net util. Um, my Go module file is here. And what I did is replaced the Langark net with net replace. This is the folder, um, the folder relative to my Go mod file. And the folder is here. Net replace. And what's going on in main Go file? It just imports net util and use some function. Where is it? I just read in some random function that this is actually here prints the line of uh, a line of some characters and some sentence. So here's pretty much. How does it work? Of course, if you sub substitute some dependency with some another uh, that is not compatible with your, um, I don't know, types, uh, function signatures, or a kind of that, it, er, everything will be broken. But in case of you just trying, um, you're just trying to switch to some fork or kind of that, that's not an issue. Oh, I see. Thanks. <laughs> interesting feature. Sure. Yeah, actually, retract is much more interesting. I still, I'm still explain, exploring that. Um, any other questions? Okay, then I'm going back to the presentation. The last thing I have to share you is, uh, yeah, I just want to get any complaints and proposals, but before that, um, I want to share you some links. So the most 
relevant, the most um, informative link is Golang.org ref mode. Uh, it's hard to find it on Golang.org, but it can be Golang modules reference. It consists of a lot of information about uh, modules. But actually, there is an issue with uh, module documentation. Uh, they are mm, documented um, partially here, partially there, and you just have some time to gather the information, even from code, uh, from code of GoMod command. Also, there is an explanation of, uh, much more better than mine, uh, explanation of uh, minimum version selection uh, algorithm by Russ Cox. Uh, please also refer to semantic version specification. I just prepared um, from one of my last presentations. I have um, a couple of tests that are that can be used for um, playing with with versioning. Uh, the presentation will be shared. I don't expect you will retype all of that. And now complaints, proposals, questions uh, about our further. Mm, communication, maybe maybe I can prepare some details about, I don't know, proxies, uh, more about commons infrastructures, maybe someone wants a practical workshop, just tell me.